On Sunday night, the Seattle Seahawks beat the New England Patriots 35-30. to And this was my favorite football game I've watched in a very, very long time. Oh my goodness. Every second mattered. And there was so much little nuance that is so interesting to me. And while I watched this video, and or this game, it's not a video. While I watched the game, uh, the, the Seahawks Patriots, I just thought of Brett Coleman, my friend. Uh, this is the kind of game that deserves a short film about it. It's that intense. It's that interesting. There's so many little moments you could talk about and highlight, so many little storylines. And uh, look, if Brett Coleman never does a video about it, then I will. Uh, because I, I just think it deserves that. And, you know, maybe next summer I'll find the time. Because there were so many important moments that got, I, I think, just lost in the, the story of the game. And I have not been this glued to my television since I remember watching Joe Burrow last year. It was the last time I was just was so engaged with every single play of a football game. It was just one of those rare, special football games. I just I will remember this the rest of my life. I really, really loved the Seahawks-Patriots game from Sunday night. You know, uh, there's little moments. One of the moments that stands out to me a lot is a second and nine where Patriots receiver Demir Bird cut his split down. He lined up inside the numbers. He scooted inside from where he normally lines up and lined up farther inside. And Bird ran an out route. Now, Seahawks defender Quinton Dunbar saw what was happening, and he jumped the route. He almost had a pick six, but he dropped the ball. If he catches it, he's gone to the house with a pick six. And that happened before halftime. Now, later in the third quarter, again, the receiver lines up way inside. Quinton Dunbar looks at that and goes, oh, I know what's coming. Bang, he jumps the route. This time he finishes the play. He gets an interception. And there are so many little moments like that sprinkled all throughout this game. Now, look, Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson was completely incredible. He was 21 for 28 passing, 288 yards, five touchdowns, did have an interception, but the interception was kind of ridiculous. He literally threw a perfect pass off of Greg Olson's hands. He Greg Olson drops it. It gets popped up in the air, grabbed, and taken for a pick six. If Russell Wilson keeps doing what he's doing every single week, and we're two games in, I know that, like, Two years ago, Ryan Fitzpatrick had this incredible stretch where he was just Fitz magic and unbelievable. But if Russell Wilson keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to easily win the NFL MVP. And honestly, I don't see any reason to believe that Russell Wilson's not going to keep playing at this incredibly high level he's playing. The Seahawks, you know, um, my buddy Brett made a video saying, you know, kind of explaining how the Seahawks have really opened things up and are finally letting Russell Wilson just, it's called let Russ cook. He's just talking about how Russ has finally been allowed to just go crazy and do whatever he wants. And uh, I just think there's no reason to believe that Russell Wilson is not going to keep playing at a high level the way he's playing. Now, Cam Newton, the Patriots quarterback. I think Cam has become my favorite story in the NFL this year. There's no player that is more captivating to me than Cam Newton. And I, I know that's crazy for me to say. I've never been like the biggest Cam Newton fan I now have become, I'm like, okay, I, I am all in on Cam Newton. He really, really, really impressed me on Sunday night. Watching this game, I thought to myself, how did the Patriots get Cam Newton? It's unbelievable they brought him in. Like, how did the other NFL teams allow the Patriots to get him? It, it baffles me endlessly when I watch him play. Not only that, the Patriots got Cam Newton on a minimum salary. <laughs> They're paying the guy just barely over a million dollars a year. Think about it this way. Marcus Mariota, the backup quarterback in Las Vegas for the Raiders, is making a lot more money than Cam Newton. Andy Dalton, a backup quarterback in Dallas, makes almost <laughs> more than twice as much money a year as Cam Newton is making in New England. The Patriots are paying Cam Newton nothing. Pennies on the dollar. I, I, I will go as far as say that this is the most cost-effective NFL contract in NFL history. We've never seen a team get such an insanely high benefit 
for such a low cost. It really, truly is insane. They're paying Cam Newton less money than a team is paying, like less than the Jets are paying their quarterback Sam Darnold on a rookie contract. Nothing. They're paying Cam Newton nothing this year. Bill Belichick is a genius. I just, the more I, and I've done a lot of research about Bill Belichick this week. I'm doing another topic later in the week about his experience with the New York Jets. The more I dive into Bill Belichick, I just get more and more impressed. And it's very, very clear. When you watch Cam Newton, he's getting the best coaching he's ever gotten in his entire life. His timing, his rhythm, his accuracy. This is the best I have ever seen Cam Newton play in his entire career. Cam made some plays on Sunday with with timing, accuracy, anticipation, throws that I've never seen him make before. And I went, okay, Cam, th- th- this is just really, really cool. Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> Cam Newton can run the ball. He had two rushing touchdowns on Sunday. And I just go back to this. Watching Cam Newton in New England gives me a whole new understanding of Tom Brady. You know, Brady got called a system quarterback his entire career in New England. And I think it's a little bit weird, a little bit silly, because it's not the play calling that made Tom Brady successful. You know, Tom Brady, there's some stuff you can never take away from him. He worked his butt off. He made checks at the line of scrimmage that were just Tom Brady being insanely good at the mental side of football. And then, you know, his decision-making, his work ethic, like Tom Brady, you can't say the guy isn't incredibly good because he always has been incredibly good his entire career. So there are things you can never take away from him. But the Patriots approach, 1,000% made Tom Brady better. New England is the best business, not just in sports, I've ever seen in any business. The one thing New England does better than anybody I've ever seen in any facet of the world is getting the most out of people. I'm a film nerd. I watch a lot of movies. A good director, they get the best performance out of an actor. They can make an okay actor have an incredible performance. Similar things happen to England, where New England, every single time New England has a player play for them, they maximize that player's success. And, you know, Tom Brady in New England always had an offense specifically designed to fit him. And with Cam Newton, the Patriots have designed an offense specifically to fit his skill set. And, you know, in Carolina, the Panthers always kind of seem to have a limited view of Cam Newton, where they saw what he was at Auburn in college and just said, we're going to do more of that. Now, the difference here is that the Patriots saw what Cam Newton could become. They had vision. They have transformed Cam Newton. And I think part of it is they weren't afraid to challenge him, which is very, very cool for Cam. There's a couple secrets in the world that I would give pretty much anything to know. Like, I really want to know, do aliens exist? I've always wondered, like, what is going on at Area 51? And then who really killed JFK? I'm just deep, deep fascination. I'm like, I want to, aliens, JFK. The next thing is, what in the world did the Patriots say to Cam Newton to sign him for the minimum amount of money? What happened in that room? What was the conversation like? I will always wonder, what did the Patriots say to Cam Newton in the 2020 NFL offseason? I I wonder if the Patriots were just honest. Were they just saying, like, look, we're not going to pay you anything. You've been hurt two years in a row. Sure. Cam, hey, this is Bill Belichick talking. Bill Belichick goes, okay, Cam, go sign to the crappy organization. Go make a couple million dollars, but have fun losing. And again, I think Bill Belichick goes, look, I'm not paying you. But I know you believe you're capable of more. We're going to give you the best coaching you've ever had. You'll win. You're going to prove people wrong with us in New England. Like, how's that for a sales pitch? Is that what happened? Is that what Bill Belichick told Cam Newton? We might never know. I hope someday there's a documentary or a book or something where we can get a definitive, a, a definitive answer. What was said to Cam Newton in that room? But it's so cool, like, the idea that they said, we're going to make you the best quarterback you've ever been. We're not going to pay you anything, but you're going to become a great quarterback. And what's even cooler than that is that Cam said yes. Cam said, I will take the coaching. I'll take the improvement. 
you believe in me and want to transform me as a player, pay me nothing. I'll prove everybody, including you, wrong. It's a perfect fit. Cam is a great leader. The Patriots are getting the best out of him. And look, the Patriots got the ball with a minute 42 seconds left in the fourth quarter against Seattle. And I, I, I love Russell Wilson. I'm, I live in the Northwest. I was nervous for Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. I believed in Cam Newton. I knew Cam is going to drive the ball down the field. And that's very, very telling. I, I had confidence in Cam. Now, what happened was this game came down to one play. First and goal on the one-yard line with two seconds left. And first of all, just let's take a minute. That's incredible. Like, how wonderful of a game. that That's how evenly matched it was. It came down to one final play. Any game like that, to me, is just a, a really, really fun time. But the Patriots had one play from the one-yard line. And they ran quarterback power, which I think is the right call there. They'd run it all game. It worked the entire game. New England did out. Yeah, the Patriots had already run it like four or five times already where, you know, Cam had two touchdowns on a quarterback power play, very similar to that. And uh, Seattle's defense appeared to have no answer. But the Patriots went to the well one too many times. The only time on Sunday that Seattle on defense was able to stop quarterback power was the one time it mattered most. How cool is that? Everybody knew what was coming. We knew Cam's going to run the ball up the middle. And Cam got stopped. Mm. Poetic, beautiful, interesting. You know, and if you're New England, right, if you're the Patriots, you have no regret. Because if you have one play to win a game, you run your best play with your best player. And that's what the Patriots did. A Seattle Seahawks fan would know the pain of throwing the ball in the one-yard line, right? We all remember when Seattle did that. They had Marshawn Lynch, and they threw the ball through the game-ending interception. So, no, if you're going to lose a game, you might as well lose a game running your best, most successful play. I, I will say that forever. I don't think the Patriots did the wrong thing. Don't get cute. Do what you're good at, and if they beat you, at least you can live without regret. The Patriots have no reason to feel regret after that game. This was an incredible, incredible game. I'm not kidding. I could watch the Patriots play Seattle 10 weeks in a row, just over and over and over again. Uh, Just imagine all the little tweaks and the little changes that would happen from week to week. It just would be just incredible. I I, I wish we could see that every single week. It'd be amazing. You know, one of my favorite movies is a Matthew McConaughey movie called Sahara. It's cheesy. It's fun. It's a silly treasure hunting movie. They could make a new Sahara movie every single year. Just change a couple things. Like the same cast. It's basically the same movie every time. But there's a couple tweaks. I would eat it up. I'd watch it. I'd pay probably a little too much money to go see it every single year in theaters. Because I love that movie. I love that formula. And, you know, I think it's an, it's like kind of the, if you like the Uncharted video game series, it's the Uncharted movie we never got. I feel the exact same way about this game where, I could watch the Patriots play Seattle every single week, just be fat and happy, and just enjoy the experience week in and week out. Now, you did think I was done. I know you're like, Zach's coming to a close. He's done talking about the Seahawks and the Patriots. I got one more thing to say, maybe two, I guess. First of all, the David Moore touchdown catch uh, right on the pylon where he's falling backwards. He got two feet in bounds. Unbelievable catch. Had a good time watching that. Now, number two, uh, what did I think? Seahawks receiver DK Metcalf had four catches for 92 yards and a touchdown. And his key moment was a 54 yard touchdown while being guarded by Stephon Gilmore, who is last year's defensive player of the year in the NFL. And look, it's funny. Anytime DK Metcalf does literally anything, (laughs) Oh, people come running from the hills. People come running from everywhere. They all come to remind me, oh, how wrong I was about DK Metcalf. Like, yeah, I know. I don't need the reminder. DK Metcalf is incredibly successful. 
And look, it's so cool to me because the guy has shown so much improvement from, you know, really beginning of last year to end of last year, then last year to this year. DK Metcalf just gets exponentially better, it feels like, every time I watch him. And uh, Seattle uses his skill set perfectly. DK Metcalf just keeps getting better and better and better. And I love watching it. Um, I don't let my ego get in the way of enjoying somebody be successful. And DK Metcalf, wow, is incredibly successful. I'm not a fortune teller. The dude clearly works incredibly hard. So I don't, I don't have a, I don't feel really bad about being wrong about that. I'm sad. I hope he doesn't hate me. Um, but I'm happy for DK Metcalf. And uh, I just had such a good time. This game, Seahawks Patriots. It's my favorite game I've watched in a long, long time. And uh, I really, as a as a football fan, I needed this moment to enjoy for quite a while. 